of beauty. It is with great pleasure that I introduce our speaker this morning, who is a physician and a metaphysician par excellence, <laughs> Dr. Reverend Sonia Davidson. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome, welcome to the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living. It's my great, great privilege to share this platform for the first time, I think, ever, or certainly since he has become a practitioner with Vance Gardner, and I'm so delighted to do so. Okay, this morning, wow, I'm fully charged and ready to go. My talk, my talk. Are we okay at the back? Okay. Stand your ground is the topic of my talk this morning. There is, some of you may be aware of it, a no notorious law in Florida, USA, and I understand some other places in the USA as well. It has the same name, but I promise you, I will not be giving you a legal dissertation on that law this morning. A stand your ground law, for those of you who don't know about the one in the USA, is a type of self-defense law that gives individuals the right to use deadly force to defend themselves without any requirement to evade or retreat from a dangerous situation, perceived or otherwise. Recent events in the USA have demonstrated how easily people may fall prey to the notion that they are in danger and act accordingly based on stereotyping. At the root of stereotyping is a sense of separation, a lack of recognition of a common identity it is easier to fall into that category than we realize. In the act of standing your ground, your primary or sole consideration would be your own safety in order to avoid, as I said before, any real or perceived threat. This is a law, a law designed by man and as such, is open to many interpretations and, yes, riddled with controversy. But the law, universal law, divine law, the law of God in action, is not shrouded in any such controversy. It is straightforward, definite, uncompromising, reliable, dependable, predictable, consistent, and yes, infallible. It is the way that the universal presence of love, light, and joy acts and responds to us, its creation. How else does it differ from the laws of man? It is not physical, but mental. It cares not what we say or do unless the saying corresponds to the knowing. It responds to our thinking and our feeling. Incidentally, our feeling is an indicator of our beliefs. And the beliefs, in turn, cause us to think consciously in a certain way, or deeply held beliefs surface and cause us to think consciously in a certain way. Our thoughts are just conscious expressions of a subconscious world, much of which often we are not aware of. How often have we been faced with the occasion when we are called to stand our ground? Stand our ground. What has been our reaction when faced with the occasion to stand our ground? Faced with these questions, 
I am almost certain that our immediate reactions coming deep from the subconscious are me, never, never. But what if someone makes statements about us that are uncomplimentary? What if someone we love is making uncomplimentary statements about themselves? What if you find yourself in the midst of a group which is decrying our beloved country? What if someone tries to start a quarrel with you? Notice I say someone starts a quarrel with you. Sometimes the what ifs are not so obvious. They may come at us in more subtle ways than we imagine. Have you ever been offered the opportunity to do something that you have never tried before, and instead of saying yes quickly, although you would dearly love to do it, you begin, you, you are confronted by an endless train of thoughts which are giving you numerous reasons why you shouldn't or couldn't. Here is yet another occasion when you may be called upon to stand your ground. What about the times in life when, you ha when life has thrown you a proverbial curveball, so to speak, just when you had begun to think that you had achieved a long sought after goal, goal at last? Do you throw your hands up and say, oh, it is not God's will, or maybe it was not for me, or, you know, the popular phrase, divine order, divine order, <laughs> loosely thrown over your shoulder. Do you love yourself enough to know that you deserve everything that you could ever desire, and moreover, that you can have it? We have often heard that God is love. If God is love, what are we? And what is our relationship to God? The famous mystic Emerson said, there is one mind common to all individual men. Every man is an inlet to the same and an outlet to all. You are an inlet to the divine and an outlet to the divine mind, which is all-knowing. That which we humans have chosen to label God is the ever-present beneficence. That which gave life to us and life through us and is always responding to us by corresponding to our desires, intentions, and beliefs. It never holds back, it just gives. It is so generous that if we choose something and we later decide we don't want it anymore, it doesn't care that we have changed our minds, it just gives. That is the nature of God. There is only one provisor that we must stand our ground until it delivers. Standing our ground metaphysically means to hold fast to the truth in the midst of conditions which would be contradictory to the truth. Stand your ground means to meet our fear with the certainty of God's presence in all, through all, and as all. Stand your ground means that we do not run away from the facts. Yes, we do not run away from the facts. We face the facts, but know the truth. The truth, perfect God, perfect man, perfect expression. That is unchanging, the changeless. To know this perfection, no matter what the circumstances, situation, or condition is love. To know that 
perfect God, perfect man, perfect expression is our nature and it is the nature of all people and all situations. That is the givingness of life to itself. Love is the givingness of itself and without it there is no growth. Love is the universal urge of the spirit for self-expression. And when it is stifled in the individual, life cannot express its greater good, cannot express its greater good through him or her. That is from our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes. And I quote again, love is the givingness of itself. Love with a capital L. And without it, there is no growth. Love is the universal urge of spirit for self-expression. And when it is stifled in the individual, life cannot express its greater good through him or her. Man is a social being. We are meant to be with others. Social isolation, all the research shows, leads to stagnation of the soul's growth. We are part of the whole and are connected at the deepest level of our being. Staying away from those who frustrate us or irritate us does not mean that we can escape from our relationship with them. We carry them in our minds just as we carry those we love in our hearts long after they have exited this earth plane. It is far better to learn to face the facts perfect God, perfect man, perfect expression. About We need to face these facts about how we feel and then stand our ground for the truth about them. Perfect God, perfect man, perfect being, perfect expression. The rewards are beyond measure. Whenever faced with a situation where we would want to run away from it unless we are so overwhelmed. We want to go knowing that we take with us whatever is in our consciousness about that situation. But I invite you to use these simple words to remind you of the unchanging nature of the divine within you, within everyone, and within all situations. Perfect God, Perfect man, perfect being together. Perfect God, perfect man, perfect being, and perfect expression. Not all the beasts, notice I inverted commas, in our lives are people. There are times when we may be faced with what at times seems like challenges that are insurmountable. Our first impulse may be to cut and run. There are times when in the face of overwhelming odds, it may be a wise thing to do so, at least for the moment. As long as we realize that there is no escaping in mind, we now need to stand our ground. I can't tell you often enough that wherever you go, you are still connected to the whole. And more important, you are connected and experiencing what you are running away from. Maybe you might experience it in a different body, a different form, but the nature of that which you refuse to stand your ground on continues to pursue you. Love is God's presence made manifest by loving. It is the unchanging and unchangeable truth about us and all others by virtue of being expressions of God. At times, this may be difficult for us to remember when confronted with a person whose behavior disappoints or offends us. Nevertheless, this is the best reason for standing your ground. 
there is an opportunity to stand up. Many years, um, let me see, in June, I will be celebrating my 47th wedding anniversary. And <laughs> some time ago, yes, he did, yeah, I think he deserves an applause, yes. <laughs> Many years ago, I think in 1980, I think that would be about 30 odd years ago, it could very well have been that that would have been my last wedding anniversary. The opportunity came for me to practice everything that I've said to you up until now. I had to stand my ground, know the truth, perfect man, perfect, perfect God, perfect man, perfect being. And oh my God, perfect expression, yes. And what a blessing, what a reward. Blessings which I could not have imagined. Believe you me, to live in a sense of a glorious relationship every day of your life. Love is its own reward. I am not telling you something which I've made up. I'm telling you something which I lived and I'm inviting you to do so. Any denial of good anywhere or in anyone is a denial of God in your own life, our own life. How could this be that God, the universal presence, could be any less present in one person than in another? Was God more present in Jesus than in the brother whose behavior we find so difficult to tolerate? Jesus did not think so. He said, whatsoever things I do, you can do likewise, and even greater things can you do if you believe in me. Which interpreted means if you accept my guidance and all the words that I've been trying to teach you. Right? It's not about just saying, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm saved. It is believing what he's teaching and take it and live in it. Jesus, by his example, showed us that he had a greater awareness of the presence of God, awareness of the presence of God in and as him than others. That is what distinguishes him, a complete acceptance and embodiment of his oneness with God. The Father and I are one, he said. At the same time that Jesus was aware of this connection with the whole, he knew also that he was not the whole, but a point where the whole manifests. Hope I'm not confusing you, not at all. Think of a wave. Wave is not the sea, eh? All of the sea. The wave cannot be disconnected from the sea, but a wave in the harbor, right? Kingston Harbor is not all of the sea, but it is connected to a wave which is manifesting in some other part of the world, somewhere, right? Okay. Got it? Got it? At the same time, let me repeat, at the same time that Jesus was aware of his connection with the whole, he knew also that he was not the whole, but a point where the whole manifests. Not I, he said, but the Father in me, he doeth the works. He took no personal credit for the spectacular feats he performed, yet he knew his authority and that of every other person he met. It is the knowledge of this authority which allowed him to reveal the perfection in those who he met and urge us to do the same. Jesus' ability to demonstrate unconditional love for everyone he met, including those who would deny him or abuse him, even those who made him angry, and he did get angry, please remember that, most certainly have come about because of his certainty of the presence of God in all, through all, and as all. John... First John, 
chapter 4, verse 20, tells us, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? To love in spite of the opportunity to be hurt is to draw upon the magnificent power of God within us. Proverbs 17, verse 17 says, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity, born in adversity. You can see God from anywhere if your mind is set to love and obey him. It is, these are the words of A. W. Tozer. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. You can see God from anywhere if your mind is set to love and obey him. You have to set your mind with the intention to see love, right? And to obey that impulse of love within you, to act upon it. It's not about nice words or doing good deeds. You have to set your mind on love and then you will, the words will come naturally and the actions will come naturally from a deep sense of genuine, sincere acknowledgement of the beauty of God's presence in that person. Here's another quote. First John chapter four, verse 16. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. The Bible is just full of all these reminders, right? We speak of our teaching as new thought, but it is a new way of introducing old, ancient truth as old as man, as old as eternity. Friends, to stand your ground, in love is to allow the presence of God to become more apparent in you and to you, in you and to you. Only good can come to us from this decision. God is the spirit of love within us, which when recognized, called forth, becomes omnipotent power. Catherine Ponder from this wonderful book, The Prospering Power of Love. God is the spirit of love within us, which when recognized and called forth becomes omnipotent power. And being a member of a group can pose its challenges of relationships and to relationships with all its diverse personalities. On many occasions, the need to stand your ground will emerge. Yes, from time to time it will. You may be called upon to uncompromising stances in the face of a threat to deeply held principles. But no matter how great the threat to your deeply held beliefs, love can find a way. Love. Dr. Ernest Holmes says, I quote him, love is the glue that binds people together and strengthens and prospers their union. Dr. Ernest Holmes, founder of Religious Science, from the hidden power of the Bible. Love is the glue that binds people together and strengthens and prospers their union. When the members of a community love one another, that community is solid, prosperous, happy. Nations are bound together by common interests and common affections, he continues. To experience love is a human necessity. Mother Teresa said that the hunger for love is much more difficult to remove than the hunger for bread. To satisfy this hunger, we must deepen our relationship with God. We have all heard this phrase, to deepen this relationship requests consistent, committed practice. Practice which goes beyond a few affirmative sentences, hurriedly put together on the way through the door in the mornings. There is no shortcut to God consciousness. But then there is also no hurry. Take your time. Enjoy the journey. There will be times along the spiritual path that the road may appear rocky. Disappointment may tempt us 
to doubt our goals or that we are going in the right direction. This is a call to stand your ground in consciousness, to be resolute in our intentions. No matter what the twists and turns are in life, no matter what the seeming delays, stand your ground, persevere, persist. Love will show the way. Love is its own reward. Perseverance is an attribute that allows us to endure with certainty of success, knowing that the goal is certain to be attained by all. The founder of Religious Science, again, Dr. Ernest Holmes, believe you me, by a science of mind textbook, come to classes. It's just rich, rich. Every time we teach this or read it, it's like new insight, just like when you read the Bible over and over, you, new things jump out at you, old things in a different way. And he says, there's a power for good in the universe, and we can use it. We draw on, unquote, we draw on this, uh, this power in affirmative prayer. We draw on it as we use our imagination to visualize what it can do for us. We draw on this power by contemplating its nature. We draw on this power by spending time in the silence and allowing ourselves to feel its presence as a warm embrace. We draw on the power as we learn to listen deeply to its inner voice. We draw on this power as we learn to consult it and obey its guidance. We draw on this power in appreciation and gratitude in all things. We draw on this power as we train the mind to recognize this power in everywhere that we look. We draw on this power in songs of worship and adoration. We draw on this service, on this power in workship and service. We draw on this power as we love one another. We are told in 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 8, and I'm just quoting a little bit of it. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. I say to you, love never ends. I implore you, my dear fellow travelers, let us stand our ground for love, in love, as love. It is worth it. To love is its own reward. Namaste.